Totta to. Hän tuli kadun. Siivo. Yeah, hopefully um cool. Carson's on. Who looks like a hologram? Whoa, up in the little make space. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And uh, let me make sure, but last I checked, the fleet team are coming too. Can everybody hear me, by the way? Mm -hmm. yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Hey, Adam. Hey, hey, good to be here. Well, yeah, I just pinged uh, the Fleek team. Make sure they're going to be able to join yeah. too. Cool. Hopping on now. Give them like a couple minutes. In the meantime, has everyone been since the last time we saw you all? Hopefully, everyone in the cool. had a yeah. long weekend, not in the US. I'm sure you have a holiday coming up soon. Hey, Brett. Hey, how's it going? Great. We have the first day of preschool happening in the background here, so a little preschool prep. You might hear a little bit of, I don't want to go to school. I'm going to say, yeah. God, congrats. In the background. Yeah, you might hear the opposite. Like, why don't I get to go to school? School got canceled today because of the the um the air quality actually oh uh, yeah actually we can uh, we've got we've had to close all of our windows from the fires in washington here we're yeah you're in washington island. too okay yeah yeah no we're we're in on vancouver island in bc and the smoke wow, is you're in, all the way up wow okay yeah yeah we're, yeah yeah we're in washington well well stay safe cool well i think we could probably get started um i think some some more people may be hopping in but i think all the the main participants for the today's agenda are on so um yeah welcome to i guess the third identity working group call and as i sent out in the um the agenda for today the main you know sort of the last two meetings we've really been high level and conceptual um, which, you know, meetings will be from time to time. Um, but one of um, some of the early use cases for identity on ceramic um, has been um, integrating IDX with textile threads. Um, and so really what we wanted to do was sort of bring together all of the different conversations that have been happening throughout the ecosystem onto one call. So hopefully um, we might be able to come up with um, some best practices or implementations for how you could sort of define and integrate a textile thread with IDX. Um, and so the agenda for today will roughly be um, Joel and Paul from um, the ceramic team just sharing out the evolution of IDX and sort of where it stands now as um, the data structure has slightly changed and been simplified, hopefully making it more versatile. Um, and then the next piece would be um, to just have a working session, um, to have the textile um, open work labs and fleet just kind of like share more a bit about their project, um, both generally and how identity might fit in. And then I guess just sort of collaborate on some ideas for implementations. I think Joel has prepped a few thought starters to just, you know, set some context and also provide some place to kick off. But beyond that, I think it's really just up to what we can discuss and figure out in this call. Does that make sense? Cool. 
And um, yes, so Adam, yeah, IDX is the identity index. Um, it's just the data structure <laughs> um, that we've been been talking about uh, in various yeah. pieces. Um, but definitely, yeah, I've been, I've been following along with with the identity index. Although, yeah, it is changing frequently and rapidly, um, which is fine. That's great. Um, I just didn't. I just didn't. <laughs> wasn't familiar with the abbreviation yet. Now I am. <laughs> Sorry, I have a dog barking, but um, yeah, n no problem. Um, and like we can, we're happy to share the latest right now, just so everyone can get on the same page, even if you know you're not as familiar with some of the recent changes. Um, and yes, Carson, uh, we, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's she's just growling now, not no barking. Um, but Carson, we can try to make this happen in thirty minutes, and yeah, I'm sure this conversation will continue. Um, so with that, let's jump right in. Um, Joel, Paul, um, I guess, Joel, do you want to share conceptual evolution of IDX? And then Paul, you want to share um, the sort of implementation and, and how it works? Yeah, that sounds good. Um, all right, so where to start? So I guess the, the first kind of CAP that was created for uh, IDX was basically like this, this index of things which mapped from like a name to other indexes. So that would be like an in index of profiles and then the index of like linked accounts and like an index of uh, collections and a bunch of stuff. So that was like the first iteration. And I think uh, that's actually what the CAP still says, but we have for a while been thinking about a new model for that, which is kind of more agnostic. And it's kind of similar if you had a look at the um, the collections index where we kind of used to do like a definition of some data to the maps to like a reference for the user for some data. So the idea with this is kind of really to not tie uh, IDX into like a specific structure of like how data should be, like what, what data should be associated with the user. And it's, it's really kind of agnostic as to like you you just put a definition of some data and you put the reference for that specific user. Um, yeah, so, so the way we do that is you have a developer create a definition. And the definition basically has like some, some name for the data and some description, but also provides some like additional information for how the reference data should look like. So once the developer has created this definition and stored that as his run document, uh, when a user comes to their application, they can read the, the definition and create their own reference for that piece of data. So um, every user will have uh, their own reference for the, for the data, but they will all share this kind of same definition that kind of defines how the data is structured. And you can imagine like that the data itself, the reference itself is, is fully encrypted. So, I mean, it doesn't have to be, but it could be it's like so, um, that would allow application developers to like see which data is available in the network, even though it's actually encrypted with the end user. Um, so that's kind of yeah, the high level overview. Um, I don't know if I missed anything on like a conceptual level. Uh, do you want to fill something in, Sena? Adam. Or do you want to ask a question, Adam? Yeah, I, I have a question. So when you say encrypted, are you talking about the the individual um, pieces of data, each being individually encrypted, so uh, so that you can see which data is available um, by the keys? Um, but I'm, I'm when I say key, I mean key value pair, um, and uh, and that they're individually encrypted, or do you mean that the entire chunk of um, of relations is encrypted? Um, so you can do multi, you can, you can do di different, go about that in different ways. So, yeah. uh, the way we've been thinking about that is that you would like, when you add a new kind of definition reference pair, uh, that could either be added as like a public thing or as a private thing. So even the, the definition itself, like which definitions the user has would be encrypted. Uh, but then you might think about like encryption for the actual data that the reference points to, but that's like separate from this. Okay, thank you. Um, cool. Joel, yeah, like on a, on a conceptual level, um, like we had gotten some feedback too that um, 
sort of defining like human readable names for information as the key basically in IDX the way it was previously structured like you had the root index which were human readable keys mapped to doc IDs of subdirectories and then those subdirectories were also human readable keys mapped to some URI which could be a ceramic document it could be um, a, a server endpoint or a database um, but basically now what what this new version of IDX also solves is it sort of says that um, it's it's like the doc ID of the definition. And so you can include other metadata in the definition beyond just a single human readable name. Um, you could include like a simple description or you could include um, other things. And, and so basically what this does is it says that, you know, it sort of gives a, a globally unique identifier for each definition. So you don't have things like name collisions or like name squatting and all these sorts of problems that you might have if you rely on words. Um, and so this is another way to sort of just make it more general because we did, it did feel weird. Like we were saying, um, this is the profile, this is the root index and the profiles index. And then, you know, we're taking the name basic for the basic profile. We're taking the name X or Y for other commonly used things. Um, and so this, this is a nice way to get around that as well. Cool. cool. Um, you want to go into detail on like how you would actually interact with this, Paul? Yep, sure. Um, let me share my screen for that. Okay, so that's the uh, SIDX repository on GitHub. Um, yeah, here just to get a bit into uh, the definitions that Joe and Michael have been talking about. Uh, so really it's a document that is gonna have this structure, um, having some required fields being the name and the schema. So the schema itself is another uh, document and we are just identifying it by the document ID here. Um, and that's gonna be used to validate the shape of the content um, of the document being defined. Um, and so we also have some other metadata such as the description and URL uh, that we mostly thought about as a way for discovery for developers. So to, to have a better idea of what are, what the definition is about uh, and maybe some reference specification, documentation, etc. Um, and also, I, we left something open for some specific configuration. Uh, so here with a config that can be pretty much anything that is being needed uh, as extra by applications for um, the specific of the definitions. Um, and so these definitions, um, what we do then in the root index is just to use that document ID as um, key um, and associate them with with the entry uh, that should be here. Yeah. So and the entry itself is going to be uh, same an object with a set of tags so that we are using as well for discovery so that can be any kind of string uh, and the reference to uh, so being the document ID to the actual content that is being uh, defined. Um, so that's really the structure of, of the root index and how it can be um, interacted with through the IDX library. Um, so to go through a simple example here, go through just some uh, integration test series. Um, where we can see, so we have the definitions here being created. Um, so having this name and a schema uh, being a predefined one through the IDX schemas library. Um, and that can then be used when creating the IDX instance. Uh, so here we're providing the schema and the definitions. And from there, um, the definition itself defines what is the alias we want to use, right? So here, over this IDX instance, we can simply use the alias as key and with the content 
so IDX will, the IDX library will load the definition um, and create the new content with, uh, by using the schema that is part of the definition. And so then on the other side, uh, we can also read this data by knowing uh, the DID of, of the other peer and just providing uh, the same definition uh, doc ID. Um, so here we can use the definition aliases as it's been done here, or simply the document ID that is being created um, when creating the definition. So another aspect that we need to, to use as well is the schemas. Um, and here we need to publish the schemas because it's just running a local ceramic node. Um, so the, the schemas need to be present on the node in order to be uh, usable then by the definition and um, the rest of IDX. Is there any question? Hope that covered it for the basics of IDX. Questions or feedback? Um, and Paul, there are two in, uh, in the chat. Uh, yeah, yeah, so publicly available definition. So yeah, that's a goal. Um, once we'll have the public ceramic network, uh, we're gonna be publishing some uh, schemas authored by, uh, through the CIPs basically, uh, and also some definitions using the schemas as being defined in the CIPs. Um, and so IDX will come with a bunch of these schemas and definitions built in. So there shouldn't be a need to redeploy them every time. Yeah, <clears throat> also like any, like as you can create a schema and make it publicly available on the ceramic network. As long as there's like one ceramic node that pins that schema, <clears throat> that, that schema will like be available. Um, so, so I just started browse, oh, sorry to interrupt. Um, I just started browsing through the, the the code, and it looks like the answer to the question that I was asking is that that yes, the schemas appear to be defined using TypeScript. So uh, the, is, that, is that basically true? The schemas are, are actually defined using uh, JSON schema. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and I think we're just using TypeScript in that library to kind of just uh, display it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So, um, the the main thing we want to talk about now is like how can we create like a definition and reference for what a pixel thread would be, and like what are the actual use cases that we want and need to solve there. Um, so I spent a little bit of time just before here uh, creating. Um, an example of what this could look like. Uh, it's not like fully fleshed out and I think I'm probably missing a bunch of details, uh, but I think it uh, can be a good place to start. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Cool. Can you all see this? Yep. It's perfect. Um, all right, so we already touched upon this a little bit and Paul showed this kind of interface before. So this is the interface of like a definition. So we have a name and this name of the definition uh, and like a description uh, URL. And all these are kind of used for like, if I get a document ID that is a definition, like, oh, I can interpret and like know that, oh, this is like basically what type of data it is. Then the schema here, and uh, the schema is really used uh, as the schema for the reference. So like once you have a definition, uh, when you create the accompanying reference, that reference will have to use this schema that's defined here. And then we have a very kind of broad open thing here. It's called config. And really here you can put like any kind of uh, object. Um, so just capture that right now with like records string any. 
So this is this is just TypeScript to kind of just describe how the, the uh, objects would look like. Um, so what we want to achieve is like what, how should we form their config uh, and perhaps like this what's going to be the schema for the resulting kind of reference for this um, threads DB like pixel threads DB um, definition. Um, so I created like two examples of how this could look very kind of um, quick iteration. So one is that we basically, the first one here is like one definition points to only one textile thread. Uh, so we have type textile threads DB um, and hub URL. It's basically like the URL where you can go and find the actual thread data. Um, so this is like a configuration that, uh, and this is all part still of the definition. So this is like a configuration that the developer would, would set. And then schema. And schema would be actually the, the schema that's used for the textile thread. So the textile allows you to like set adjacent schema for a thread. And we could actually in here define what that schema could be. So that's like the developer defines what the data should look like that comes into the thread. So like when so a mother developer might look at this definition and see like, oh, this is a text thread on no, it as data store in this format. And those threads are also JSON uh, schema. Those schema definitions are also JSON schema. Yeah. So that that um, config that points to a textile thread and has a schema there, that's talking about the schema that's inside the textile thread? Exactly. OK. And what yeah, if the textile thread has multiple schemas? Can it have multiple schemas? You can have, so you're just talking about multiple collections? Yeah. Yeah. You, so your schema can define, like you, you still have one schema, but it, ha it has multiple definitions within it, which is a perfectly okay thing to do with JSON okay. schema. So you put that one schema here, which outlines multiple collections. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so this is like one option we can like, um, is this someone post something? Uh, you asked about the URL. Uh, basically, like if you want to have a URL to like your developer site or something like that, like, hey, I created this definition. Or is he saying the URL? No, I, no, I was just trying to follow along with the with this document oh. that you're showing. So I was just asking for the URL to this I document. I see. Uh, so this is our notion. I don't know if this is publicly shared. Oh, OK. We Joel, can probably share something after. Joel, you oh, OK. Joel. That's, a, that's all right. I'll look this up. What should I search? And I can just make it public now. Just go engineering development efforts collections. Uh, cool. So that's that's like one option. Like we have one thread per per uh, collection, or sorry, per definition. Another option might be to have like multiple threads per definition. So here we would like there's like config two, and um, you also have a hub URL, and then we have this uh, map here from, that goes from name. Uh, to a string, and that, that would be like a schema document ID. So we have like name, schema for each uh, thread. And then we have like this object that contains like multiple, uh, this is basically just like a map uh, in TypeScript type. So we would have this thread and then the map from like name to schema. Uh, so this would allow us to have like uh, basically an infinite number of, of threads within this, this uh, definition. All right, so that's the definition side. So if you look at what the reference side would be, so like reference one for, for config one. So this is my first uh, take. I don't know if this is completely right, but we basically have this reference. And this is like every user would have like their own reference. Uh, so the user would have their own thread ID. And then uh, they might store like an encrypted follow key. and this is a JWE, so that might be encrypted to like only themselves, or it might be encrypted to like themselves and uh, some some of their friends or or like uh, someone else. Basically, you can like 
encrypt the JWT to another DID uh, fairly simply. And same thing with like an encrypted read key. And so that, that's like the basic idea that we store this kind of user related information in the reference and the kind of general config um, information in the in the definition up here. And yeah, same thing for this reference too. That's like this config to or like mirrors that's config to. So basically here we just have like a map from a name to a thread, which is the same thing as up here. Um, yeah, so this is kind of my first take. Um, I would love to hear kind of thoughts and if I'm missing something or there's some use case that I haven't thought of or that, that this doesn't fit on. No, I mean, that's to me, that makes credit, although we do call it encrypted service key. Uh, Wait, the, uh, this one? Yeah. Are you changing it? Because it's more general than. Uh, but um, no, that seems pretty reasonable. Like the main things you need are like a, uh, a multi address of like some peer that has the thread, which is generally the hub or a, hu a hub. So, oh, so this would be like a. Yeah, the multi address is the ideal. I mean, it, you can always translate that if you if if it's easier to have an actual URL, but yeah. It could be, a, that's generally a multi-address. And then the threads, thread ID and the two keys. And we actually have a, an encoded form for like the pair of keys. They look awesome, sweetie. I love them, yeah. Um, uh, we have an encrypted form for the pairs of pair of keys. Um, so you might only need one um, actual encrypted key, but, um, but it's good to break them out actually. So there, and there's con there's situations where you, where read key might would have, would be an optional because you might have a service that has a service key, but not the read key. Yeah. Th that's, that's what I thought about basically. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's I like, that's pretty good. Yeah. What if, um, what if you have a situation in which you want to give different access to different entities, um, would you create a new reference for each entity that you want to access your thread in a different way? So for example, let's say, let's say you have two applications that are accessing a DID in a similar way that three box might, where you have, you basically want to request access to a space where the space is actually a threads DB and you have application one that, wants to read it but not service it and you have application two that wants to service it but not read it how do you handle that mm, so you basically want <clears throat> want to give the application access to like this thing but not that thing yeah well you want to be able to you you want to be able to give both but on a granular level um one one thing and i i had been thinking about this for a little bit instead of putting um, the, any actual keys encrypted or not on the reference, um, you, could, you could point to a, a, an a, a, a different doc, which is like an access control doc, which is a little more flexible potentially. Um, so, or, or multiple access control docs, so that if you're like an application and you wanna request access to the read key, then like, you get act added to a specific access control doc there um, rather than does that I'm, I'm, I'm bad at articulating it because I don't fully understand it myself, but basically creating a doc that is just the access control and pointing to that from the threads reference. Yeah. I mean, I think that could make sense to like set that out to like a different document because like you might be updating that a lot and you might not be updating this thing a lot. So that, that might right, be- Right, exactly, exactly. The, the thing with like these JWEs is that you can have one that's like, so the service key might be shared with like five different services, but the read key might be shared with like two other people. Um, so so that's that's kind of already possible with, with this structure, but I guess you could move these, these two into a um, separate like- I see what you're saying. 
So you'd basically just take whatever like raw thread keys that you get and you'd encrypt them via IDX or Ceramic or however you're creating the JWE and you basically pass in a list of addresses that you want to be able to decrypt that. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, I see that. And then, yeah, it does seem, it does seem to make sense like you were saying, because you don't want to keep updating the threads DB reference when all you're changing is the access control of it. Yep. You might just want to, yeah. And so Carson, um, are there, so right now there are two keys. The service key is, is basically like an admin key, pretty much like a, like your, you have all access to write and then the read is obviously just reading. Is that right? Uh, yes, except the opposite. Oh, so the so service, read. the service key is just for like pinning and like tracking updates and the read key, which is, yeah, arguably a misnomer, but it allows you to read the actual data and potentially write the actual data if you have. Okay. Um, if you're so service key is for reading is for getting decrypted information. Like, can you decrypt the encrypted thread data via the service key, or can you just back it up? You can only just back it up. Okay. So, yeah. okay. That's what you're saying. So, yeah. So you can, you can follow the updates and you can like pin them, but you can't actually access the contents of those, of those blobs unless you have the read key. And then Sanders actually about to land um, some finer grained ACL rules for the threads that provide like further um, access control about like writes and deletes and that sort of um, thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind and of have like two layers. Mm -hmm. Is that the same system here? Like will there just be new keys that are created for those actions? as roles? No, those will be actual like access control rules. So, because like no matter what, if you, if you can read or write or do something with the data, you'll need the read key, but it'll be up to the application to like enforce whether you are allowed to write or delete something. Um, up to the app. So, so that's not in the protocol. No, it's, well, it's not part of the like key based protocol. It's in the like, protocol definition where like, uh, you know, compliant peers must be, you know, follow these rules, but, um, but it's not in the, like, it's not a key based protocol. We like to separate it into like what you can do and what you should do. And this stuff limits what you can do and the ACL rules limit what you should do. But, but it's still like based hmm. on, so, so what you're, what you're, the distinction you're making is that can do meaning you can decrypt but yeah. you're actually like signing each update, right? So it's actually like you can sign an update that's not valid to the protocol, but it's not yeah. really valid. So that would be like dismissed. So that yeah. actually yeah. makes me wonder like, so this read key, uh, I don't know if this is symmetric or not, but there is like another, like this, this signing key, right? Is that like, um, yeah, that's not the signing key. The signing key would be in, in the signing key and this like system is designed to be f like flexible enough that it could be like something derived from your, your IDX. Like it can be whatever key you want. Okay. So maybe there should be like an encrypted write key or something. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm still kind of confused on the can do, should do thing, because like... Well, okay, that was just, ignore all of that and just, yeah, don't worry about, about that part, because that's just like application level access control. The main thing is service key is for like pinning services. Read key is for like peers that are actually interacting with the data. Got it, right, right, right. But like what I'm saying is that if I'm a user and I just invite let's say Thomas to, I really just want him to like, look at this one doc that I've been working on, for example, doc, doc's a poor thing because we're talking about docs. I want to invite Thomas to my family photos, but I don't want him to be able to add to them. And he's running yeah. his own textile peer. He would need the read key and I would basically just have to trust him to not write to it. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, yes, that is what I'm saying. Currently that is the like, primary right. uh, it's, it's that second layer I was talking about that would prevent him from actually writing but um, 
that's actually encoded in the thread. So there's no need to like actually store that in from that, that, that ACL. Oh, information oh, oh, I see what you're saying. So the, so the ACL is tied to the thread. So yes, exactly. I, so if I wanted, so then I couldn't create like a family, could I create a family photos thread where I could let some of my family edit that thread with me collaboratively and then other then others on that same thread just read from it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll, I'll follow up and when we like get closer to that point. Cause. Okay. That was a little I, I actually have to run. Um, yeah. I'm so no sorry doubt. about that folks, but yeah, I'll follow up with anybody who wants to and um, we can continue it next time. Even. Cool. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Go ahead, Carson. All right. Um, so one down thing down. I wanted to like get a better understanding of, so like I had these two examples of like either it's just like one thread per uh, definition and reference, or we have like uh, multiple threads per definition and reference. And as for like you were looking to use it, use this, like how, which makes most sense for that? Um. Well, so I, I, can you scroll? Oh, wait, I have this too. Um, I guess the thing, the thing for me is that the, the definition, basically, it all to me kind of falls in the config, right? Like, because the only thing that would be different is the, like all, almost all schemas are going to be the same, right? It's going to be like a doc, like the basic tile is probably the right word or they're all going to stem from something similar, like whatever the basic profile used, right? When you create well, yeah, I don't think it's going to be like super, like, so this schema, like, so for example, we're going to create a definition for this, the basic profile. And that's going to have a schema. And the schema is basically going to be exactly what the basic profile is supposed to be. Uh, right. you're going to then it actually that defines the schema that. of the data. But in, right. in this case, the schema here, we just define like, okay, this this threads to be should look either like this right the okay got it or the reference should it. look like this so the schema right so the schema is okay i see what you're saying so the first thing you have to do is publish the schema before you can even write the definition the schema is yeah like if we look at those tests that paul was showing where he publishes the Definition. Was yeah. What's the link to that test? Yeah. Let me send it here. Yeah, I see. Okay, so his schemas schemas dot basic profile. Oh, I see what's happening. So when you publish the schemas, you take some JSON and you basically get a list of doc IDs. And then, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, okay. um, the IDX schemas library contains uh, just JSON schemas definitions. And then by publishing them to the Ceramic Network, you get uh, the doc ID back. Uh, right. And from there, you can start using them. Exactly. Got I'm going to give you like a sneak preview of this uh, tutorial that I've been writing. Um, so this is oh, the, this, yeah. the CLI, um, and here we can actually do create a schema. So we do ceramic create tile and content, and then this is just basically like a JSON schema. And then nice. we get this okay. this doc ID, and now oh I can God, create. going to be what the schema is. Yeah. Yeah. So I set the schema to the the thing, and then I set the content to like. Title a docket schema. And now this throws an error because it's missing description. I see. And yeah, yeah. Okay, this makes description. sense. And now, yeah, I actually have um, this document which referenced this schema. Right. So, so then why? Oh, so for config. So for me, for me, I, I I don't even necessarily think the config like. I would put the config in the schema that you have here, if it were me, rather than creating a new definition for each thread. Like I don't like I don't I, each thread is pretty similar, 
the only difference would be the access control to it. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can, you, can you repeat? Yeah, like I, I don't, or I guess, why don't I ask, like why, why do you put this JSON object as a config rather than on the schema itself? Like why is hub URL a property on the config rather than the reference? So, the schema. Because like you as a developer want to define that and that should be same for all of your users. So basically what you put in the reference is something that's like the same for all users. And uh, what's in the reference is like what's specific for that specific user. So if right. you're building an app, you might use a specific um, hub URL and you want all the, this is the schema that's defined here is different from the schema up here. So this schema is the, the, the textile threads schema, right? Or the, like the, the, the textile collection schema. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I still think this could be on the, on the schema itself rather than the config. Cause like, cause, so if you have one, if you have one definition that defines all textile threads, um, I, I no, guess. No, no. So, so I guess like, I, I wouldn't want to have like one definition that defines a, like all of one user's textile threads. So like you would probably want to create a definition for your app. This is like uh, open work labs app one. And then it has like either one thread or like multiple threads. Right. right, but why would you, why, why do that instead of allow, like try and push for interoperability across apps? Because you wouldn't really know what data you're getting. Like if, if, if all apps use the same definition for all threads, then like how do you know who created it? How do you know what data is in it? Like, um, From, it, but I was just saying you could put that information on the reference because you could put like, if you have schema in the config, yeah, but if you, you put, put it in the reference, like um, you have no discoverability. So if I'm a developer and I want to like use like mm. some data from app X Y C, like I, I would have to like go to all the users, look at their references, and like, oh, this is the schema that you're using. And if the users have that information encrypted fully, then I have no way of knowing that. So the the idea with like putting the schema since definition like this config in. Uh, definitions is that we get discoverability of, of the data w without having necessarily access to the data. That makes sense. Mm, I do see what you're saying. That makes sense. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just trying to avoid the, the one definition per thread thing as well. You know what I mean? Like there's two sides. There's, there's the one definition for all threads, or there's one definition per thread, and hopefully we find somewhere that lands in the middle. Oh, that wasn't um, what I meant. So with, with no, I know you you meant the exact opposite. Um, like, or you you I don't think you meant to imply that, but I was saying like, okay, for me the hub URL is kind of the thing that might cause that because like for us, if we let's say we um, like, I and I just don't know how you access threads from the hub but like presumably the the url to access a thread might live at a different place for each thread and so then you'd need to have a definition for every thread and then the discoverability aspect of it is not as useful to me are, are you saying you have a, have a different hub for each thread i get what he's well, saying you might have the same. like he's what? just saying that in case instead of hub url like you could just put like host URL or something because like it theoretically could be some multi address could be the hub could be somewhere and what yeah it's like the host yeah yeah so it'd be like openworklabs.com not openworklabs.com slash thread two you know what I mean yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Schwartz what you're talking about like the discoverability across multiple uh, entries in this index um, this was why we initially thought about having these sub like subdirectories but there's another way that you could do this where in the in idx you could create an entry for like your app like a definition and you could include the 
all of the the definitions basically that your app points to so you have like a it's almost like a it's like it's kind of like a a meta index of this index to just say like which entries do i actually care about um mm. you can group them in whatever way so you could create you could think about creating this you know collection basically of openworks labs definitions and entries or you can create a collection of profiles which can be cut however you want them to be cut like um you can have you know the same definition and entry referenced in multiple of these collections um right right that makes sense it basically like having the idx the way we had been conceiving of it now is more like this big flat structure and then you can build these like meta collections or collections on top of idx where you can group information to make it more discoverable to you or logical sense to others mm -hmm. i think that makes sense yeah and i i thomas you might know better what what do you think because you just said a thread each thread has its own multi-address yeah as far as i understand it um each yeah each thread has a multi-address right so this this is actually what the thread id here would be i think right um I think the thread ID might be like part of the multi address, like the end of it potentially. Um, but it's definitely like the thread ID is not the entire multi address. Um, okay, so there might be like a we, there might be need for like an additional property here. Yeah. In the reference. And between um, between. Um, oh, I see what you're doing. So you can have a. I I think config one to me makes the most sense um it seems simpler right so you, you only have like one definition that defines one specific textile thread and then yeah if right. you want to have another textile thread you would create another definition right right um rather than this which has groupings of threads because then then you get at least then you you kind of I mean, apart from, I, so I don't, yeah, I see what you're saying. It's hard for, like, it's hard to know. You know what I mean? It's just hard to know. Like, because I could see myself in terms of discoverability, like, it might, it's kind of nice to overlap where we can. So, like, oh, I want to know all textile threads that have this specific type of schema. Um, and... I don't really care where it's hosted. You know what I mean? I guess, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm still trying to digest this, but it's basically for me juggling the discoverability yeah. aspect with the what's stored on the reference. Sure. I mean, I, I mean, you can still do that, right? So you would, you would find all the config okay. that are for textile threads and have the schema and you don't you don't need to care about this you, that's just okay. like oh now i know where i can find the data right because it does make sense that you would want to find all the threads that were hosted in one place as well because presumably that might be like your app or a hosted service which right. as another point i mean probably not to do right away but like the host url could also point to a services doc um that shows you how you're hosting it because for us we might not do it in this we might abstract a layer over threads um or something uh as well as like yeah i, I don't know so there might be some more abstraction there to play with but obviously yeah. we don't want to make it too complicated yeah i mean i think it makes sense what you said like basically focus on this for the first iteration like the simple config and then like because that, that's like the easiest place to start and then we can iterate and like expand if needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It'd be interesting to hear what you think might go into uh, a service document. So like if host URL was just service. Uh, and it yeah, like the hub could have its own reference doc, right? Like, and that is a service. What a service is. Same with for us, like we, we have some services that we're gonna run that we're trying to figure out like yeah for us everything's still really fluid like what is a its own app and what's part of like the thing we're building for and so we're trying to draw lines between 
responsibilities, but that's, it, it gets a little difficult for us now. So it's hard for me to know like what exactly is a service. The hub right. seems pretty self-contained. Sorry, you go. Yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's, that's really great, like making that separation because then like if you had only this and like I was using your service hub and I just put your host URL there, like if you change URL, I need to go to all of my uh, definition documents and like update the host URL. But if I'm actually pointing to a service document that you created, like you can just update spot. that and I don't yeah. need to like know about it. You don't need to care. Yeah. So that would be nice. Um, and we're doing that with a few, like we have a few services that we are going to run that when, so basically in our, in our app, like when a user signs up um, or creates a new DID, basically we're trying to create a new kind of like graph for them, which, which is pre-populated with a number of services that we've already, that is kind of like default services that we're using or that the user is kind of like agreeing to use. Um, so that's something that we'll definitely be thinking about as well. Um, and I think host URL pointing to another service, which is like a, a hub like service or local, like local is another option as well. Um, could make sense. Yeah, and ideally you would want to have something that's like, this is the config that's like standard for all the users, but then the user might like, oh, I also actually want to use this, my own service that backs up on my own computer. Like in the reference, they might have like a, like a, oops. Something like that. Mm. So they can like, choose like so, so you can like have an additional um thing i see i see it yeah. seems like, oh oh yeah, yeah i have to be right back because i'm getting a delivery okay and it seems like we're approaching time anyways yeah, um i think this one was only 45 minutes so i think we're already over um yeah okay so i'm gonna keep working on this because this is like right where we're at um and in, in tandem with trying to get some of the IDX stuff actually just working. Um, uh, so yeah, this will be, this will be good. And Paul, that wasn't a shot of you, but my bad, that was more of a shot of me. All right. Um, and yeah, John, I think like to me, at least the replacing host URL with just like service and having that be a document that is owned by your app which you can update um i think makes sense because that that's the easiest way for it to be like those changes to propagate across all users because it happens automatically because the link right. rather than like a string that lives in each user's thing separately oh god it'd be terrible yeah and then you'd have to make a bunch of ethereum updates for each user and when you want to change that right yeah, Joel, we were just saying, I, I do think that the, the service abstraction makes sense here in the config. Uh, what? Because you could just, in a service doc, put your post URL. Um, but basically, like, if this host URL changes for my app, like, let's say I move to a different provider or I get a new multi-address somehow, then uh, every user, it will be out of date quickly for users that haven't used my app since I changed it. Right, like. Well, no, I mean, the config is owned and controlled by the app creator, right? So the config is part of the definition. Got you, and that, and that definition is automatic. Yeah, okay, so that's automatic. Like we create that. Yep, so that automatically, Basically, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the definition is created by a developer and the reference is created by the user. You need to I still think there's value. <laughs> yeah. I, I still think there's value in having the service uh, document, but I, I don't think it's like strictly needed, but I think that would be like a convenient thing because then I can just use someone else's service and I don't have to care about updating my, my definitions. Yep. Yeah. Isn't that true? And also, sorry, Schwartz, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, like, 
it also just provides a little more flexibility for other app developers that might consume this definition to have some flexibility over the service that they provide. So like, you know, maybe there's some more thing over host URL that you need to provide in a, in a threads hosted service. Um, but which I just don't even know about yet, but eventually that it, 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 I think making it a service doc to start preserves breaking backwards in the future. If we know that this is something that we're going to want to do. Yeah. Like basically I'm even thinking about like metadata about that endpoint or like, right. Yeah. Like who is it? Who owns it? Who, yeah. Like I might want to know like, okay, is that hosted by Temporal or Pinata or Impura or some, or storage? Cause fuck, I, I, you know, I'm staying away from storage or something like, so yeah. Or even like cost, you can imagine in the future if right. there are payments that like you might charge for reading or writing it, like bandwidth basically consumed at that endpoint. Um, if I'm a third party that isn't the one that's like paying them. Um, so like all that like service endpoint metadata, um, including payment could be included in that abstraction. All right. So I think we have like a good, um, good shared point. understanding now. And so I'm kind of just like wondering what the next step, step should be. Like uh, maybe let's take this document and maybe put it somewhere we can like edit collaboratively. And I think the end goal should be like that we create a CIP for like a threads DB uh, definition and reference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, it would be cool to build those helpers in the IDX, um, like to create a thread um, with all the encryption stuff happening. And then also like, it, I mean, you frequently might want to invite to a, a thread or remove from a thread. Um, and those operations and understanding how they change the like threads DB reference and how they change the access control might be, it might be helpful to make those methods uh, handy. But if that's not something that you wanted to put in IDX, I think that makes sense too. But from my perspective, that's kind of like what I'm working on. Yeah, so we've been thinking about like making some kind of plugin system for IDX. And like, mm. I think the goal is to have IDX be like super minimal. So, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. not really opinionized about which kind of definitions you, you have, but then you can like plug in these different types of like threads, DB or something else. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, so from our perspective, we're gonna probably start trying to code this. Once I can get, once I can actually like do do the things which we'll talk about tomorrow cool yep. and Joel, this cool. document is already a collaborative place where we can work on it it is i think so yeah i mean i made it public schwartz can you type in this mm -hmm. it's just read um, i just like share with I know I edit this. Is there any way to just leave like commenting? Allow comments. Should I allow editing? Yeah, allow editing. Publicly on the web. You could allow just comments too. Like we can just comment on it. Now you, now you should be able to edit. Refresh. Mm, not, no, but I can comment now at least. Hmm. It says that you should be able to hit it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you should be able to. Maybe it just needs another refresh or something. Trying again. Mm. No, but, but whatever, I'm, I'm just going to leave comments there anyways. Okay, cool. And yeah. then, um, yeah, I mean, this is definitely helpful. And I agree, like these plugins for different you know, like data store types or whatever you might need are going to be useful. Um, yeah. I also think, so we'll need to create a definition for the access control. Cause like, right. And so, we could like, no. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't actually need to, right. 
I mean, the access control can probably have a schema, but I mean, that's not strictly needed. But you don't really need a definition for it because like that's just, the access control is just like something that's stored and point to from the reference. Okay. So like you well, have that thinking, in the branch of, of like the... Right, like you can always access it without a definition. I get what you're saying. For me, what I was saying is like, the way that textile is implementing their auth hopefully is not they're just not reinventing the wheel and that the way that we're doing access control for threads could be could be replicated to other systems which is why this access control could be like it wouldn't be a threads access control doc it could be like a read and service access control or something like that's very it's tied to the implementation and not the service that it's being it's actually controlling, if that makes sense. Okay. Kind of, maybe not. We can, we can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, still think you can just keep that in the references for other things as well. Like, I don't think you need, or like, why would you need a definition for that? Well, I guess when I think of definitions, like, if I, if I were implementing my own access control or something, then I could look at how other people are implementing access control based on finding all the access control definitions out there. Yep. Um, we can, we can, that's like a very unimportant small point though. Uh, it's like. So do you imagine that each user like would add this definition and reference to their IDX? Because that's kind of feel well, like a bit detached. Yeah, I mean, I'm, so I'm still wrapping my head around how definitions and schemas and stuff are populated throughout the whole network. Um, I haven't gotten too deep into that yet, so I don't, I don't really know. But presumably, like, at the start of the ceramic network launch, like, hopefully we'll just publish a lot of the definitions that are, sta like, stable. And if we had some of the access control ones that were stable, or even one, then we could publish it at the beginning, and then every user would need to publish their own definition right there would just be like a access control doc yeah. that i guess i don't really see the point of like having i mean it makes sense to have like a schema for a schema uh, yeah I, I might be just conflating schema with definition too um okay yeah. yeah i mean let's keep discussing and see if if need is there yeah cool yeah all right. Oh, I guess just because, okay, last point, last point, last point is that if you want to make it actually like completely machine readable, like you could have your, your, um, like any day. Any, so if we just think about like the web three spec, which I don't know very well at all, but there's like an encrypted data vault, right? So like, if we think about this from that perspective, like don't think about threads, don't think about threads, access control. There's, a data vault and then there's some access control over it and so both of those things could have definitions that are widely used um, like in this circumstance we're talking about textile as the data vault and then we're talking about some mechanism for access controlling it which might be the direct like the read key and the service key which could be one definition but it might also be a different type of access control that's built on top of threads and so if you're a computer reading the threads reference and then you look at the access control, you might need to know, hey, what access control am I actually looking at? Like, what's the, what's the strategy here? And that, my understanding was you'd need a definition for. Right. So that's actually what, so in the definition, like, or in the config for, for ceramic, uh, for in the textile um, definition, I put like a type and the type said like, Thread, textile threads to be and you could do something similar with like an access control document it's just like a type so then it's up to the application to like read the type and then oh this is this type of access control right right oh i see what you're saying but wouldn't that be then on the on the interface on the config which is part of the definition which would mean that you'd need an access control definition uh no, I think you can do that separately. Uh, you can but, do that on yeah, the reference I'm, too. I'm not okay. sure. There might be some nuances there. Okay, we can yeah, we can talk about this later. It's it's like it's not that it's not that big of a deal. Yep.
All right. This is and a the reference. Point. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. I get or it. I get it. We will, uh, let's continue working on that doc. Um, and as yeah, you think yeah. about it, let's just continue to push it and flesh that out. Yeah. As we, as we build this, we're definitely going to find things that we didn't think of. So I think we just think of it as like living. Yep. Sweet. All right. Sounds good, guys. Yep. Thanks for hopping on, Philip. Thanks for hanging out. Um, see you, everyone. See you next time. Yeah. Talk to you later. Bye. Peace.